What's up? CJ here. If you saw the recent video here on the channel about GitHub stars, there was a particular style in that video where all of the images and logos looked like they were cut out and put on top of paper. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I did that. Now, the process actually started with physical paper because I'm not super familiar with like Figma or Photoshop, and I wasn't super familiar with how I was gonna actually achieve that effect. And what I do know is how to use a printer. So I actually printed out a logo. I cut it out and tried to just see like, does this look like what I want it to? Cause I kind of had a vision in my head of what the video would look like with all these paper cutouts, but I just didn't know. Um, and so the physical copy was really good to have. And then the next thing is now that I have this printout, well, I want to potentially use it in a video. So I need to get it onto the computer somehow. So I decided to scan it in. And from there, I also needed to remove the background because it was going to need to be overlaid with other elements. Uh, and so I gave that a try and it was all right. I, I think the, the paper aesthetic worked, but it being printed and then scanned was just a, a little bit too low fidelity. And from there, I was like, all right, I like this look, but I want it to be a little bit more polished. So let's try and recreate it inside of Figma. And initially I had no idea what I was doing. And the first thing that I came across was this idea of textures. For instance, I could take some pictures of crumpled white paper and then apply that to a mask. That's the shape of an image that I'd like to put onto paper or the shape of the background for a particular logo. And then I could apply the paper mask onto it and then it would look like that shape was cut out of paper. All right, check, that part was done. From there, the actual image that was gonna be on the paper, I wanted it to look like it was printed on the paper. And this is also where textures come into play. So I found a resource that had tons of paper textures, but also noise textures. And if you've ever seen this look that people have achieved in videos or sometimes even like in magazines, a lot of times they're using noise to just make it look a little bit grainier, <laughs> like make it look a little bit low fidelity. And it kind of replicates that effect of actually being printed onto paper. And so this is also fairly simple to do inside of Figma, but it's a little bit cumbersome. Essentially like copy paste the thing you wanna put this texture onto, create a mask. So now that the noise is the shape of the image and then position that mask right on top of the image, and then from there, you can change the blend mode. And so this is also something you can do inside of Figma. Essentially, you can choose how the image above other images affects it. And so by default, there's no blending going on. The image is just literally on top of the other image. But when you choose a blend mode like multiply or lighten or darken or color dodge, that now takes the image that's on top and changes how it affects the image below it. And the masking effect I found worked for the effect that I was trying to go for, it was called hard light. It essentially just made it look a little bit grainier and it really gave it that effect of being printed on paper. And so after all that trial and error, I came up with a process for how I was going to create all of these assets and images for the video. But there were a lot of assets I needed to create. So the video was covering 15 different frameworks and for each one, I was covering the news and releases that they did throughout the year. And for each one, I would have to create several different paper assets. So I knew I was gonna need to create a lot of assets, but I didn't know exactly how many because I was editing linearly, right? So each framework, I did one at a time. And as I was working on it, I would create the paper assets and then move on to the next framework. But the video is already published. So I, I did a tally now to see how many paper assets I created. And there are 286 different assets of things on top of paper. If you don't believe me, go watch the video and count, but it was a ton. But I realized this pretty early on. I didn't want to have to do this process inside of Figma for every single image. And I now know that there are 286 of them. And so if every image took roughly four minutes to create and there are 286 of them, that would have taken almost 19 hours just of asset creation. And I tried to figure out better ways or like kind of like shortcuts inside of Figma. And I, I couldn't come up with any. If you have any thoughts, definitely throw them down in the comments. But personally, I am a web developer and I thought I could recreate this whole process I was doing inside of Figma in the browser, right? Like I can position images on top of each other. I also learned that CSS has blend modes and the ability to use masking images. So all these same things I was doing inside of Figma, I could actually recreate with code. So I decided to give it a try. So essentially my code layers the things in the same way that I would inside of Figma. So you have one layer that's the mask. You then have the paper that is applied to that mask so it looks like it's cut out. Then you have the image sitting on top of it. Then you have another image with the noise applied with a blend mode to the image, and that's positioned exactly on top of the other image. Now, the other thing I was able to do by automating all of this was I was able to randomize it because one of the other aspects of this is I didn't want it to look the same for every single image, right? Because that would get a little bit redundant. It would look less organic if you had the exact same paper cutouts and the tape in the exact same position and the exact same pieces of tape for every image. So because I was already writing code, 
I could randomize it. So I had a list of 10 different masks that you could choose from and 10 different types of paper and like five different pieces of tape and it would randomize it. So whenever you load an image in, it would choose a random mask, choose a random paper, choose a random place to put the tape. But ultimately I got it working with code. So the exact same flow that I was doing in Figma could now happen in an instant. I could point it at any image, I could specify any text and it would instantly appear on top of paper and look like this effect that I was going for. But there was one more thing I needed to figure out, which is how do I now turn that into an image that I can use inside of a video? Now, pretty much every web browser has a way of doing this. Essentially, you can open the developer tools, right click on the element you wanna export as an image and choose take a screenshot or export and it will export that one specific image and then you can use it elsewhere. So that worked, but it also was a little bit cumbersome, right? Because for every image I wanted to create, I'd have to load it up, open the dev tools, and then export. So now in order to actually automate this process of turning these things into screenshots, I needed to do some research and ultimately came across Puppeteer. So Puppeteer is used for a lot of different things. It is a browser automation framework. Essentially, you can write code that launches a web browser and then interacts with the web page and does various things like that but it supports the ability of taking screenshots of specific elements or an entire page. And there's also a plugin for it called Puppeteer Screen Recorder. So I could also have some animation. So this is another aspect of the video. If you look closely, these paper images are just like wiggling slightly. And so what I did is in the code, I added a CSS animation that would wiggle the element. And with Puppeteer, I would visit the website and then record the screen as a transparent video. And so now I have a video file that I can bring into DaVinci Resolve, position it anywhere because it has that transparent background and it's just like a slightly wiggling image. And so now I had my new automated process. And as I was working on the video, these were all just scripts that I could run from the command line. And so for essentially every section of the video, I would go through and figure out all the assets that I needed. Then I would update the code to point to those images that I wanted to turn into paper images run the code, it would just spit out a bunch of transparent videos, and then I could just drag and drop those into my editor. And so that's the process I used for the video that was published. But now I want this process to be reusable by non-technical people and just other people on my team. So Randy and Caitlin both edit videos for the Syntax channel, and sometimes they might wanna achieve this paper effect for videos as well. And so for that, I created a desktop application. Essentially, I took all the work that I had done to create all of these scripts and wrapped it up into a nice user interface. So now any non-technical user can launch the app, drop an image in and specify all of the settings. So you can flip between the different masks to use or the different paper backgrounds or where the tape should be positioned. And so now you don't have to know how to code. You can just launch this app and adjust all of the settings and then easily export and use those images wherever you'd like. And so this was the long process of just basically going from printed out paper to using an image editor, to using code to automate it, to then packaging it up and making it useful for the people on my team. Now, this is something I've done a lot throughout my career and now I kind of just get to do as a job. And so hopefully you enjoyed hearing my process and my journey of basically creating all of this stuff. And hopefully it inspires you to go and create things because there's a lot of other things I do on the daily that I just decide to automate. I'll, I'll be making some videos on those tools that I create for those types of things as well. Uh, but it's just it's just something I do. If, if something's taking me a long time, I figure out some way to make that process easier, make it repeatable, and now make it shareable. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.